Hello, I'm Leticia Miral, I'm a paper magician, and this new paper secret, we are going to talk about fairy tale carriages. Fairy tales, we imagine princesses, castles, and carriages. Carriage is a very important ingredient in a good old fairy tale. If, for example, you think about Cinderella, this is the very first thing you think of a pumpkin fairy tale carriage driven by mice. That's the very first thing you think of. There is also a lot of other fairy tale carriages, like in Puss in Boots, the, king, uh, the king's carriage, which in Puss and Boots, Le Chaboté. There is also a very nice summer carriage um, that belonged to La Fée des Lilas, the Lilac Fairy in Donkeskin. And this one is driven by a sheep, which is quite a lovely idea. La Comtesse de Ségur, in a lot of her fairy tales, also imagine uh, unexpected animals to, to drive this, uh, these magical carriages. In Blondine, there is a little carriage driven by two ostriches which is also very nice, a very nice idea. But the award of the most magical descriptions of carriages, fairy tale carriages, goes to Madame Dolnois, who is a French fairy tale writer from the 17th century, which I adore. I adore her work and her stories and her character. And she has imagined a lot of uh, crazy, magical carriages. For example, in the Bluebird, there is a carriage uh, who belongs to a magician, and this one is driven by flying frogs, which is really funny, flying frogs. Who would have imagined that? In White Cat, there is a big description, very, very detailed description, about the carriage which is going to bring back the prince to his kingdom. And this, uh, this is the White Cat who has uh, ordered this carriage for the prince. And this is the amazing carriage with a lot of uh, detailed uh, portraits of white cats everywhere. There are uh, 12 horses. This magic magical golden carriage is also followed by hundreds of other carriages driven by eight horses themselves. It's all totally insane and there are very spectacular descriptions of all that. And really, I think she, she always wants to push the limits of the quantity, the amount of, of um, precious materials to create uh, all these magical carriages. So this is um, really something worth reading if you want to dive into this uh, 18th, 17th century fairy tale carriages. It's quite lovely to go back to these stories, to just uh, take some inspiration if you want to perhaps do a carriage yourself. So a carriage has to be really magnificent, spectacular, full of details. Perhaps you have noticed we are not surrounded by a lot of carriages these days. It's quite hard to find some. I see one every day at the park. This is a carriage driven by a little horse who is um, collecting the garbages and the trash. It's not very, very poetical, but at least there is one. But at least we can make one if we don't have carriages around us. And I'm pretty sure the little princess you secretly are would love a carriage. So a carriage can be open, like a summer carriage, or it can be completely closed, which is quite nice because it gives a lot of possibilities to make some decor, sculpting decors at the top of the carriage on the roof and doing all sorts of arabesque and beautiful things. So to make a carriage, you can use iron wire, newspaper, cardboard, thin cardboard, foam board, a mix of all of that, and it's going to work. There are not really a single way to make a beautiful carriage. You can totally create a structure uh, on a sort of armature with iron wire. You could do that. 
it's not my way of working. I like to create walls, roofs, uh, floors with thin cardboard, cutting it and uh, as adjusting all the pieces together, then using the iron wire rather for the arabesque and the wheels and all these things. But tons of ways could work. There's not really one specific way to make a beautiful carriage. I made a lot of carriages in the past in my life. I didn't drive a lot, but at least I made a lot. Some laces carriages, some teapots carriages, some regular carriages, toy carriages from all of my characters. I did that a lot. And so I have learned a few things, uh, some mistakes and some experiences I'm going to share with you a little to help you make a beautiful carriage. First thing which is very important for a carriage, of course, are the wheels. The wheels are absolutely very very important. They are not very difficult to do but there are a few things um, to do if you want to have a beautiful elegant fairy tale carriage. The first thing is you have to create first the structure, the house part if you will of the carriage before doing the wheels so you will know exactly how big your wheels have to be. The bigger they are, the wider they are, the more beautiful your carriage will be. I like to make sometimes my back carriage a little wider than the front ones as it was commonplace in the 18th century but it's not an obligation. It's quite nice though. And to create the wheels of course you will have to use iron wire. The, the thing here is you have to use a quite thick iron wire. I use a 1.1 millimeter. Depending on the country you live in you might use other sort of dimension uh, for this um, not using the centimeter millimeter rule. So this one is thick but not too thin. It can bend but not too much. If it bends really well it's going to be really annoying. It's not going to support the structure of the carriage because the carriage is if we use paper glue and all that it's not going to be super heavy but a little bit and with this sort of iron wire it's going to be enough to have quite supportive wheels because they have to support the structure of the carriage. A really nice and efficient way to build the wheels on a carriage is just very simply to use a box or a jar or something to put your sort of box carriage on top of it um, and this way your wheels won't support the weight of the carriage. The wheels are super fragile when you are building the, um, the carriage. If it's a little heavy, this one is quite big. So in that case, I absolutely need to support it with something during the whole attaching process, attaching the wheels, which is going to be quite challenging. If you have a big carriage, big wheels and all that, it's slightly more complicated than it looks. This way your wheels won't uh, dry sideways or falling from uh, on the left or on the right. They will be totally straight, totally nice. It will help supporting a beautiful and magnificent carriage. So it's a really nice way to think of this little tool, this little thing to help support your carriage uh, as you are building the wheels. And the wheels is also a very nice opportunity to create a beautiful decor. You have the spokes of the wheels and um, in the 18th century especially they were really detailed, there were a lot of sort of molding thing on it, on them and it's, uh, it's super time consuming, let me tell you, to do that but you could, if you want, try to create some sort of little decor also decor at the center of the wheel or it's really a beautiful way to create a very personalized and very spectacular carriage to really make the most of your wheels and to make them really full of arabesque and decor, flowers, whatever you want. Use a lot of drying time to, for your carriage. Don't do, try to do everything at once, it won't work. You need to, um, to use a lot of uh, drying time to help your carriage dry really well, the wheels really well, and to work on sort of different sessions to really make your carriage um, with different working sessions with a lot of drying time. So it's, so it's going to be really easier, especially for the wheels. You have to let them dry really well before even trying to do the decor. You don't do the decor at all. Any beautiful things before you have the structure really secure, really well adjusted, glued and perfectly dry. So if you enjoyed this video, if you receive some kind of value, you can always share it with your friends who you think might be interested in fairy tale magical carriages. It's always a very helpful way to spread the word. And if you want to dive in deep into the making of a magical carriage, I have a fairy tale carriage workshop coming on the 28th of October 2016. Perhaps you are watching this video in the future and it's in that case already there in my online classes website on the course pages among the other workshops. 
So you can go on the page, there is a link below the video and you can already see what's going to happen, what you're going to learn. I will guide you really in detail, step by step, with a lot and lot of videos uh, helping you make a beautiful carriage. I will give you options. You will have a lot of ways to personalize your carriage and make it totally unique. And this one won't be driven by dragons, by flying frogs or by ostriches. It's going to be driven by a beautiful hare, slightly inspired by Wonderland, but also by the 18th Baroque fairy tale style with the beautiful costumes. So I will teach you, teach you also how to make um, a hair in this workshop. And in the second episode of this series, this paper secret series about carriages, I will share with you more things about the decor and technical tips on how to do um, a beautiful fairy tale carriage. In the meantime, I leave you here. You can subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss the next videos. And I see you very soon uh, for the new paper secret. I wish you a very, very beautiful, creative day. Thank you very much for watching.